Hello everyone, today I'm getting on with harvesting the carrots. They're long overdue, probably a month longer than I would normally leave them for. They will stand in the ground very well and they'll stand in the ground well all winter. But the problem with that is once it gets to the very cold weather and the ground freezes, it could be difficult to get them out. So they're best harvest, harvested and stored. And I've got two methods for storing them. One I use mostly all the time and one I haven't used for about about 15 years but I know what crop I'm going to be getting up because I've seen seen them in the ground and I'm going to need to go back to my roots with this old fashioned if you like storage method so we'll crack on we'll get them up get them all graded and sorted out and right at the end of the video uh, we'll get them all stored away and talk about that so let's crack on with it so many of you will be familiar with these carrot boxes. I've shown them all some along and have shown me taking carrots out of them. And it's a, been an incredible harvest. Um, I'm very pleased with them. So I've taken one box off here, which is just behind me here on the path. Just taken that up. And all this foliage, as you can see from that bo back box, hopefully, the foliage is quite high. So I've just chopped it down with some shears and that's all there in a pile and I'm ready now to harvest. Now, even though we've been eating these for a few months, easily a few months now, you can see I haven't actually got that far into the bed, so I'm expecting quite a bumper haul through here. It'll be patchy. There'll be some with smaller, smaller carrots and some with bigger. It's just the way of it. But we'll get them up and then we'll see where we can go from there. So we'll have a look and see what we've got. Immediately, I can see there are plenty in here. Some like this one have the top it's been nibbled on by a mouse but that's still a good carrot it will still eat well so I've got a persuader here if I need it it's just a case of very carefully trying to lift these they're all in compost they're all in no dig so they should come up relatively easily So these are all, all shapes and sizes, but all lovely nonetheless. I mean, just from that small area, gosh, that looks like a parsnip. Pale carrot, oh well. And so I'll just pull up what I can. The reason I'm pulling them and not leaving them in the ground is twofold, really. The ground can freeze around them and it can make it difficult to harvest them through winter, which is essentially well, where we're going to be eating these. Um, and the second reason really is just so the ground is clear and I can prepare over this, dig through and get rid of any any weed problems. But I can see I'm going to have a very, very decent crop here. So I'll get as many of these up and then we'll come back and uh, show you what to do with them next. So I very quickly uh, filled that little tray and I've got this giant sized pile of carrots here I've just piled in the middle so I now need to sort my way through them and I'll go and do that elsewhere just pick them all up put them in a crate and we'll go and sort them out so I've got a great big box of carrots here and what I want to start doing now is grading or sorting through them and removing the foliage now you might be tempted to wash these don't best with the dirt left on. I'm just checking that they're all right, not damaged, taking the foliage off, because if the foliage carries on growing in storage, that can sap, it can lead to transpiration through the leaves, and it can sap all that nice juicy goodness out of your carrot, and that's when they start wrinkling. Um, so before they go into final storage, I will snip those off with um, a pair of scissors, get them nice and tight. It's almost like how you get them when you go and buy them in a supermarket but uh, not one of these is straight so as I say I want to grade them for storage so big ones 
will obviously go into storage. The smaller ones will go into another bucket or another tray. Carrots like that, I know that they're just not going to store very well and they will dehydrate very quickly. They'll go in a separate tray and that's for immediate use. So for either veg eating within the next week or two or, and it's probably the case, I'll probably make a soup from them. Uh, freeze a couple of portions of soup and then we'll eat the rest but we've got the storage for through the winter to go in those sorts of soups, stews, casseroles with those cheaper cuts of meat that you make the lovely unctuous meals with. See even a carrot like that that's been chewed obviously I would think by a mouse maybe a rat or something but that's still good enough to cut that off there that's usable soup. So it doesn't get wasted and I'm really just checking for pests because uh, I don't want anything to, to go into the storage facility. See again, that one's been eaten out, but that's still good enough for soup. So I'll, I'll work my way through all of these and I'll be left with two trays of carrots. And then depending on how many I've got, and it looks like I'm going to have a lot, I will choose how I want to store them. But we're not going to go short on carrots this year, which is good. Good staple English winter veg. A lot of these have actually been chewed by mice. But that's, I guess, because I have left them in far too long, really. But anyway, I'll crack on with this. And um, we'll bring you back again. So I've roughly sorted my way through these now. These are the good, obviously the good sized ones. These are the ones that I'm going into storage, which we'll deal with in a minute. There's also some good sized ones in here, but these are ones that were either damaged or they're broken or snapped. So they wouldn't store very well. These are the ones I'm gonna be using to make into soup and into things like carrot mash and stuff. Other things like that that can, I can freeze or to use immediately. In this box, there's still more to saw through there, but all the bigger ones are out of it. There's still plenty in here of a reasonable size. So these I will store in sand at home. If there's, any, if there's more than we can use within the next sort of three weeks, three or four weeks, I will store them in sand in the shed at home and we'll use those before we get these out of storage from down here. But this is what we're gonna deal with next is these bigger ones. So because I've got an unusually large crop of carrots, these are all the big ones that I want to store. Normally what I do is I normally store them in trays and you don't want a plastic line them. You want something like a hessian sack, something that's gonna uh, breathe. <laughs> layer of sand, lay your carrots out, not touching them. Another layer of sand and fill your tray up. And they normally sit in the shed at home but I've got so many out there that that's going to be enough for the next probably month or two before I need to use these. So I'm going to use an old fashioned method and that's a carrot clamp. And the last time I used it was the last time I had a crop similar to this, probably about 15, 16 years ago. I've certainly never used it on this plot before, but it's just a hole. It's about two foot big. Um, if your crop's excessive, it's even more than this and more than I've got probably twice this much because I've still got another bed to dig over. Then you can just make the clamp wider, make it up to three foot wide. And it's just four or five inches deep and it's got a flat bottom and I've just layered it with a lot, little bit of straw as an insulation layer. And then because the, the way carrots are shaped, the bigger at the shoulder, lay the shoulder on the outside because that's where you know, is, is the biggest area as such, if you see what I mean by when I do this, the smaller areas, the smaller area in the middle accepts the points very well. And then just sort of lay your carrots in. Try not to have them touching if you can, always at best. Because if one starts to rot, you don't want it to spread to the next one. Now normally, um, when I go back to when I was a lad, um, these would be done straight outside on the actual veg beds because back then 
gardeners didn't really have sort of greenhouses and polytunnels and sheds on the plots. The, in our village, they weren't allowed. So they made these clamps straight out on the veg beds and they would clamp all of their sort of root veg. So carrots, parsnips, if they had to pull them, um, potatoes, swedes, turnips, all of those things can be clamped. And it's just a way of storing them, keeping them nice, because what can happen is you, carrots will stand all winter in a bed, but if the ground freezes, you can't get them up. So this is a good way of doing it. So then just cover with another layer of this straw. And you build this layer, these layers of carrots and straw up until you've, you've got all your veggies stored. And then you throw the soil that you've dug out from the hole back over the top. And I'm doing it inside in the polytunnel for two reasons. One, we have very wet winters here and I don't want these getting too wet. You can throw a tarp over them if persistent wet weather is forecast. You don't need it forecast here, we get persistent wet weather. But I figured it'll keep them drier in here and less chance of them freezing as well inside the polytunnel. So that's essentially it, that, that's a clamp, that's as simple as it gets. If you look on the old pictures that you might see in various gardening books, they look difficult to construct, but they're not. And they're a sensible option for storing, especially when, like me here, you've got a glut of them. And when you want them, you just come and part the soil on the top, fertile your way down through the layers, and take your veg home, take enough for the week, cover it back over with the soil, and you're good to go. See, this ground in here will be mostly unused through the, through the winter, so it's not going to get wet or anything. The only thing you might struggle with a little bit is you might get a little bit of pest damage. The mice might find them. But even so, they'll only nibble away at a couple, you know, so it's not a, it's not a game changer in that respect. So there we go, that's it. Vegetable clamp, root veg clamp. Certainly one to have in your armory if you get a glut like this anyway. So we're about four layers up now and we're now out of the ground. And I'm now using the soil that I dug out to just make a little bit of an embankment around it, just to hold that straw in, just to keep it tidy. And then we're ready then to put the next layer of straw on and carry on up there. So you continue doing that until basically you run out of carriage to, to put in there. But that little embankment helps you to build it along the way. So once once the character has, you know, once the clamp is out of the ground, so to speak, this will just contain your straw. And you can go on with your next layer of carrots. So now you just, now you've got your final layer and final layer of insulation on. Just pull the soil over the top.
There we go, one clamp done. So with these carrots clamped up, the ones that I've got that are much smaller and too small to store like this will go home and they'll be in boxes of sand at home and they will see us through the next month, maybe two months. These will take over after it and then after that the carrots that are grown in the main polytunnel will then take over and then after that carrots that I sow next year uh, will take over. So I've got this continuation of carrots just by using a little bit of storage and by continually sowing new seeds. So that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. Um, I expect many people know about this, but I expect very few have actually ever done it. And let's say 15 years at least since I last made one. So I'm quite happy to revisit my roots there. But anyway, that's it for today. Look after yourselves, everyone. I'll see you all very soon. Tarano.